Hey guys and welcome back to the finance channel. My name is Daniel and today we will be analyzing Teladoc stock, ticker symbol TDOC. In this video I'm going to go through Teladoc's business model, financials, revenue growth, and make sure to stick around until the end of the video where I go through my long-term price target for the stock as well as some buy targets. So just for a quick bit of background here, Teladoc currently trading right around $200 a share at a market cap of $28 billion. The stock has, you know, seen a massive run because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but it's been kind of flat since June. Actually, it's been on a downtrend since June. So, you know, this might be an opportunity to kind of take a look at the stock. If you are new here, first of all, welcome. Make sure to subscribe to join the community and also hit that like button if you enjoy this type of content. If you have any questions, comments, or ticker symbols that you want me to look at, make sure to drop those down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So what Teladoc is, is essentially they are the leader in the telehealth space. So, you know, let's say you want to go see a doctor instead of going to an actual clinic and seeing them in person, you go to the Teladoc app or the Teladoc website and you see a doctor online. They manage, you know, essentially everything that has to do with health. Uh, we have a kind of a graph here. I'm just going to read these off. Wellness and prevention, improving nutrition, exercise and well-being primary care, serve as the quarterback for care, developing care plans and referring individuals to resources they need, both virtual and in person, mental health care, address stress, anxiety and other conditions with therapy, counseling and treatment, you know, depression, anxiety, stress, although sad, it's something that's growing uh, throughout the world. And the fact that Teladoc is solving this problem with their platform, you know, it's, you know, it's an incredible thing. Acute care, assess, diagnose, and treat everyday health issues such as flu, infections, and skin conditions. Specialty care, consult a specialist via virtual care, and coordinate referrals to an in-network, in-person care. Chronic care, take charge of health challenges with monitoring and personalized support. Complex care, gain advice on diagnosis, treatment plan, or surgery from world-renowned specialists, care coordination, navigate across both virtual and in-person resources, ensuring access to high-quality care throughout. Teladoc has essentially create, created the platform that includes everything you need in terms of, uh, you know, going to a doctor or, you know, needing treatment for things such as diabetes. I mean, they just uh, merged with Livongo, which I'll talk a bit more about in a second, but they have essentially created a powerhouse in the telehealth sector. They are the leader in the sector. They're going to be the leader in the sector. And no one even comes close to second in terms of the telehealth space. Teladoc is number one, and there's no doubt about that. And in my opinion, this sector is only going to continue to grow into the future as more and more people shift to online. I mean, this pandemic has just been an example of, you know, transition to online through, you know, Zoom, Peloton, Teladoc. It's just Teladoc is here to stay, and it will always be. Once someone joins Teladoc, they're going to keep using it because of the cost savings. Um, you know, in terms of revenue growth here, 67% uh, uh, compounded annual growth rate from 2015 to 2020. You know, this year in 2020, they're estimated to do $988 million, which is, I mean, just incredible. They have 90% client retention rate, which, again, I love a recurring business model a recurring revenue business model, because it means essentially if they made a billion dollars in revenue last year, they're going to make most of that again this year. And then they just add on whatever new clients they have. So, you know, as they continue to grow into new services, new payment models, new, new care settings, as they have written down here, that revenue is going to continue to grow. They're going to maintain that client base that they have. They're going to grow a bigger client base. And then they can, um, you know, take those existing clients that they have and, you know, offer, you know, new services such as, you know, therapy or diabetes treatment, etc. There are a lot of cost savings in regards to, you know, transitioning this to online. You don't need a doctor's office. You don't need a receptionist. This is all done through online, straight from the doctor's home to your home. And it's an easy way to communicate, easy way to save money. And in my opinion, is the way that this industry is the direction that this industry is going to take over the coming years. 85% uh, year over year revenue growth for quarter two of 2020. This is a very fast growing company. This is something to remember. 85%, you don't see that every day. And, you know, when someone can make an argument that, okay, you know, it's a pandemic, of course they're going to grow revenues, but 
This has been a company that has been growing revenues consistently over the past five years. And in my opinion, you know, they're going to continue to be able to grow that revenue by, you know, a very large amount over the next decade. And they're going to become one of the biggest, most important companies, you know, in the healthcare space. 92% year over year growth in US paid membership. That's important membership that's recurring. When someone has a membership, they're more likely to stay, they're less likely to cancel, less likely to move back to, you know, going in person. 203% Q2 2020 year over year growth in total visits. More people are using Teladoc, which I mean, if you're going to go use a telehealth platform, you're going to go use Teladoc. They're the leader in the space. They've got the best product out of anyone. So they did merge with Livongo. And in my opinion, this is, you know, one of the best things that they could have done because one of the main risks with Teladoc used to be Livongo, essentially. There, you know, it was going to be a battle between Livongo and Teladoc, the same battle that's going on right now with Slack and Microsoft Teams was essentially going to happen with Teladoc and Livongo. But what they did, they came together and have created a powerhouse in the telehealth sector. The things that Teladoc didn't have, Livongo has. The things that Livongo didn't have, Teladoc has. We just get a few examples here of, you know, what check marks are checked off by Teladoc and Livongo, and which ones are checked off by both. Market leading distribution and position, both of them have that. Proven total cost of care impact with demonstrated quality and outcomes, leading consumer engagement and marketing approaches. That's a, that's one big thing, marketing. Teladoc customers, you know, Teladoc can market Lavongo's products on Teladoc and uh, Lavongo can market Teladoc's products to Lavongo customers. This is really important. It's essentially free market. You're taking customers from Lavongo, you know, Transitioning them to uh, Teladoc, you're taking customers from Teladoc, transitioning them to Livongo. Scalable technology enabled platform. These are things that they both have. So, you know, although they both did it, now they can combine, take their methods and, and make these processes more efficient, like marketing in terms of what Teladoc had and Livongo didn't. Teladoc, largest virtual care delivery network across 450 plus specialists and global reach with customers in over 175 countries. That's huge. I mean, you're a company that has access to 175 countries. And now you can transition Livongo into those countries. And it's going to be much easier than it would have been for Livongo doing it solo. Uh, deep connectivity to in-person care delivery ecosystem. Now, in terms of what Livongo had and Teladoc didn't, automated one-to-many delivery model across multiple conditions. One of the biggest um, kind of things about Livongo is their treatment for diabetes. You know, you could get treated for diabetes without having, without having to go to a doctor's office. You do it all through online. The doctors collect all of the data. You have regular checkups. I mean, it's just an incredible pro process that's done all through online that saves money, that saves time. And I mean, it's just incredible. Behavioral science based engine that drives personalized results. Actionable, data-driven clinical insights at scale. And these two things, Teladoc and Livongo together, create the world's first integrated, proactive, virtual delivery system. I like to call it um, a Televongo. That's the, that's the name I like to use. I mean, Teladoc and Livongo, this partnership that they've done together has set them up to dominate the telehealth sector and really take advantage of the shift that we're seeing to online. Uh, in terms of Livongo here, in uh, quarter two of 2020, you know, 113% year over year growth in diabetes members, just huge. And in my opinion, that is one of the biggest markets for Livongo. 125% year over year growth in annual re er, in Q2 revenue. Uh, plus 64 average member net promoter score, $2,000 per participant per year gross medical savings in diabetes. That's huge. You're saving $2,000 per year by using Livongo. I mean, who wouldn't do that? You're saving time because you don't have to drive to the doctor's office. You get all your stuff sent to you. And I mean, it's just an incredible way to treat diabetes and to save money. 75% Q2 2020 year over year client growth, you know, expanding that client base further and further. $109 or $109 million record EVA in Q2 2020. 94% client retention rate. That's huge. I mean, 
they're almost maintaining all of their all of their clients. Same with uh, Teladoc, but on even even on a higher level than Teladoc at 94%. I, I love to see it. So in terms of what Teladoc has done since its IPO, is expand to a variety of different sectors through introducing different products or acquiring different companies or mergers like they did with Livongo here. I mean, I'm not going to read all of these because I don't want to make this video too long, but you can pause and just kind of read a few of the things that they've done here. And Livongo is the biggest, you know, merger acquisition that they've done as a company. And in my opinion, it's going to be one of the biggest things for them, revenue growth wise, company wise, and expanding their user user base. So Teladoc and Livongo at this moment have a giant opportunity to capture this expanding market, the telehealth industry. Just look here, 38% expected compounded annual growth rate for the telehealth market over the next five years. That's just, to have Teladoc and Levo or Tele Televongo at the forefront of this is just incredible. And the other statistic here is um, over $250 billion in annual US spending can be virtualized. Livongo and Teladoc are at the forefront of this. They're going to be able to take advantage of this giant, ma like massive opportunity as more people transition from actual doctor's clinics to online. In terms of the TAM for Teladoc, $121 billion combined US TAM for Teladoc and Livongo. That's huge. You know, you, you factor in things such as general medicine, behavioral health, expert medicine, hospital and health systems, diabetes, hypertension, and you know, you get that. But there's no doubt in my mind that Teladoc and Livongo are gonna continue to innovate like they have been over the past you know, decade and you know, expand into different sectors and grow into different countries. Keep in mind, this is just the US TAM. You have to factor in the entire world. Teladoc's in over 170 countries. The TAM for worldwide is much bigger than the TAM in the US. That's just something to keep in mind of. So in terms of the balance sheet here, this is you know really important when you're analyzing a company because it really allows you to factor in risks of bankruptcy and you know potential dilution coming with shares. Total cash that they have right now is $1.2 billion. And in terms of current debt, it's only at $200 million. So, you know, they could pay that off and still have around a billion dollars in cash. The, you know, the semi worrying thing is that they have almost a billion dollars in the long term debt, but that's long term debt. They're going to be able to pay that off over the next, you know, coming years. They could pay that off right now. I mean, they've got $1.2 billion in cash. And also keep in mind, this year, Teladoc posted you know, a few um, quarters with positive free cash flow, meaning that their business is actually taking money in. As, as they expand as a business, as their revenues expand, they're going to be generating a lot more cash flow than they did before. And then that's also going to be a thing that allows them to pay off that long-term debt over time. So in terms of their gross profit, this is just incredible. I mean, I love a high margin business. Teladoc, I mean, you can just kind of see the comparison here between revenue and gross profit. They've been growing by a massive amount. And that gross profit has been growing at the same time. And in terms of percentage, the gross profit kind of hovers around 70%. Um, you know, it really depends uh, by you know, year on year, but it's kind of hovering around 70%, 60-70% at this moment in time. So in terms of Teladoc's valuation, it's sitting at around a $29 billion market cap, but we can't use the traditional metrics because you know they're not profitable, so we can't use price to earnings. And in terms of price to sales, this is off because this isn't including the Lovongo merger. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna kind of take what analysts expect them to do next year with uh, Lovongo, and you know they're expected to grow 81% and have around $2 billion in revenue next year. So in terms of next year's price to sales, it's around 14.4, which is really what you want to look at with Teladoc. And in my opinion, that's actually pretty fairly valued. I mean, a lot of these tech stocks are trading at price to sales of 20, 40, 60. I mean, look at Snowflake. It's trading at a price to sales of like 250. Just, you know, just incredible numbers, right? And then we have Teladoc here, which is a large part of a rapidly growing industry. They have rapid revenue growth. They have almost no competition. It's a great balance sheet. They're going to turn profitable over the next two, three years. So at a 14.4 forward price to sales, I think that this is, you know, pretty fairly valued. 
So in terms of my buy targets, keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. This is kind of what I'm thinking in terms of Teladoc. Uh, do your own due diligence, make up your own price targets. But this is kind of where I'm at. At $200 a share, which is where it's at right now, I think that this stock presents fair value. If it ever got to around $170 per share, which it was a few weeks ago, I think then it shows some good value then, right? But you know where it would show incredible value is if it ever got to the $150 per share range or under that, that would be incredible, right? So in my opinion, this is kind of one of those that I got a kind of dollar cost average into because we are having vaccines roll out over the coming months. And that may start a bit of a downtrend over uh, rather with the stay at home stocks like Zoom, DocuSign and Teladoc. Now, I'm not saying that Teladoc essentially is going to be a, a loser next year that can't manage to grow, but it is bundled up with those stay at home stocks. So it is important to know that it's going to trade alongside those stocks as well. So in my opinion, it's important to dollar cost average with this one because you'd never really know starting a small position and then as the share price goes down, just keep putting money in. And that's kind of how I think. And in terms of a long-term price target, five to 10 years out, I really think this could be a stock that's trading anywhere from a thousand to $2,000 per share. And honestly, that might even be a bit conservative there on the low side. But, you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking in terms of Teladoc. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, comments, or ticker symbols you want me to look at, make sure to drop those down there as well. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.